Hey gang, Scott here. This video talking about inverting masks in Lightroom. Uh, I posted a video a few days ago about the new changes in Lightroom with their masking, you know, major overhaul, really good stuff. If you haven't seen that video, go check it out. I'll give you context for this video. Because one of the questions that came up through the, the conversations on YouTube was how do I invert one of these multi-component masks and I'll explain and show you again what that means here and it kind of worked out a, a bit of a recipe you know, thanks to DK Traveler who helped out with trying a couple things out and uh, I wanted to show this to you so you understand how you can do an inversion of a mask when you've got multiple components so uh, to set the stage here let me get these uh, these masking tools open and let's just do something very obvious with this photo let me get a brush and I'll Take the feather all the way down, get something as a small size, and we're really just going to draw something completely obvious so we know this is a mask, right? Little happy smiley person here. So that mask is quite obvious. And we hover over that mask icon, we can see this is the mask that we have. Now I want to take that. It's uh, you know, I, I apply something like exposure. Great. And when I take that and I want to invert it, well, a simple mask like this, it's very straightforward, right? We'll go up to our masking panel. We duplicate that mask. And then over on the right hand side, we have an invert, right? I have this mask selected. I click invert. And if I take the exposure down, say, right? But I hover over these masks. And right? here's the top one. Here's the bottom one. Those are inverted. Simple, straightforward. Where things start to get a little more interesting is when you have multiple components. So let's uh, reset all of our masks here, delete all the masks, and start again. Let's start, say, with, uh, let's just use a linear gradient here, okay? So we have a, a gradient, and we draw that down from the top. We'll make some token change, such as darken it. But when I hover over that mask, this is what I have. Hmm, okay, I like that, but for whatever reason, for whatever reason, I wanted to remove some of that mask from a portion of the photo. And let's just say the guest house sign. So I just brush that away. And we're just making a very obvious change. So when I hover over that mask, this is what I have. Now, how do I go about inverting the sum total of this here? I don't have on the top level, I don't have like an invert choice. So what do we do? Okay, well here is the recipe. You take your mask, your composite, your com combined component mask, duplicate it. Whatever you did for the bottom, the base thing you changed, you invert that. And then all the other things you convert to either an add or a subtract. You know, that'll be a little more obvious here as we see here. So here I've got a base of a gradient and I've got this subtract of a brush. To make a inversion of that, duplicate the mask. I'll expand that open. And the first thing is I'll take the gradient, select it, check the invert box. That inverted the gradient. Now the brush is still on that guest house. I would want the brush to be not doing that. Triple dot menu, convert this to an add. And so now, when I hover over the mask, here is the inverted mask, here is the original mask. They are indeed polar opposites, exactly what you want. So there's, there's a little bit of a dance here. You need to invert the base component of your multi-component mask and then convert the others. It's like, all right, well, Scott, well, what about some of the more complex things like luminosity masks or when you're intersecting masks with other masks? It works the same way. Let's delete all those masks and start again. Let's add a luminance range mask. And uh, let's, uh, let's target everything except the shadows. So we're like, you know, not, not affecting those, those dark windows there. But also, um, I want to intersect this with something. So let's intersect this with, say, a linear gradient. And so now I'm, I'm dragging this down here. Um, let me actually rotate this around. So I'm affecting the bottom part of the photo with this luminance range mask, right? I hover over this, we can see what's going on. I have a luminance range at the bottom and a linear gradient removing this effect from the top, but in a feathered manner. Now notice I did an intersect with this gradient. 
Lightroom added this as a subtract component. So intersect ends up being a subtract. So there we are at the same little recipe here, right? We can take our base component mask, invert that, and then convert the subtracts to adds. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll take this mask, we will duplicate it, and then follow the recipe. I'll take the luminance range mask, select that, hit invert, linear gradient, convert to an add, and now I have an opposite mask. First mask we did originally, second mask is the inverted one. And so notice it's affecting all of those shadows in the window, it's applied to the top part of the photo, and then feathers out. So that is the story with inverting these multi-component masks in Lightroom. A little bit of a dance, but we can do it. Recapping, take your bottom component, invert that using the checkbox on the panel, and then for everything else you've added, convert it. If you've done an add to, convert that to a subtract. If you've done a subtract, convert that to an add. If you did an intersect, that component becomes a subtract, so you would convert that to an add. And if you have three or four of these things, yeah, you gotta walk through the entire stack. I am hopeful that Lightroom will have an additional feature to invert this entire thing for us, so all of these steps just kind of get done for us under the covers. Uh, we don't have that right now, but this is how you can do it. Thanks again to DK Traveler for kicking this idea around with me in the YouTube comments. You got other thoughts, other uh, cool masking tips or tricks, drop them in the comments. We can all get better with the tools together. And until next time, my name's Scott Davenport. Have fun.